Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Most High God. Praise the Most High God. Glory, I love it. Praise God. Welcome all of you here today and welcome to my social media audience. Today is Saturday, May 18th, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming live from the Bronx, New York. New York, that liberal state of America, yes, that God has to deal with one day. But we're still trying to get the message of God out to you and to the rest of the world. Amen? Amen. So, as always here, Ambassadors of Christ Ministries, we believe in the authority of one book. This content is not my authority, has never been, is not, and so help me, God will never be. Amen. My authority for all things spiritual, moral, and theological is and remains continuously and without compromise, one book, the Holy Bible. Amen. Everybody take this book in your right hand and say as loudly as you can, this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. I believe it. I believe it. I will study it. I will study it. I will teach it. I will teach it. I will preach it. I will preach it. I will live for it. I will live for it. I will die for it. I will die for it. Glory of Yeshua. To the glory of Yeshua. Amen. And amen. And amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Welcome again to those who are joining or will be joining us. Today's subject is going to reach your heart, I believe. By God's grace, I use the word by God's grace and because of God's mercy and because of God's love. I want to talk about a subject that is very confusing to many Christians and of course people who are not Christians even more so. God's love, grace, mercy and punishment. More emphasis will be placed on the word punishment today and I'll show you why in a short while. There is a common belief that you know that people somehow can't reconcile the fact, the biblical theological fact that God is love, that the same God who is love is also a God who punishes. <laughs> Strange. In fact, many people often say, and I've heard this from people, well, I don't really believe in God because if God were really a God of love, why would he allow? And then they list, itemize all the problems in the world. <laughs> As if God is responsible for the man's drunkenness, and nations go into war, and the famine here, and starvation there, as if God himself is responsible for that. I want to help you understand to the church that God, the God I worship, Yahweh, Y-H-V-H, yud Hey, vav Hey, Yehovah, or some say Jehovah, but Yahweh, <coughs> that he is absolutely love. God is love. It's not that God has love, God is love. Amen. God is love. And in that love is expressed through His grace and mercy and punishment. Yes. Yes. I don't need to give you a lengthy sermon of love and grace and mercy. You know why? Because we, you hear a lot of that. In fact, we have gone to the extreme now. We, oh, let's talk about God's love and love and love and love and love. <laughs> but don't talk about God's punishment. Because God doesn't do that. Really? You know, there, there are the theologians in, in, in Christian circles who no longer even believe in hell. They believe that because God is love, everybody is going to heaven. And let me, let's be clear. You can't create your own theology because you're not God. I am not God. I cannot create what I want something to be. Some people believe they have the power to speak things into existence. Oh, a lot of charismatic fools go there and you tell their congregations, you can speak it into existence. I always challenge them, if you can speak anything into existence, why don't you speak peace into existence? Why don't you speak healing for every human being into existence? You cannot. God is God. And He does not share His glory or power with any human being. Amen. 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 So what's grace, what's, what's mercy, and what's punishment? Well, very briefly, without going into too much, too many details, I don't want this to be too theological here for the next hour. I want to get on to the fact that our God, the God of love, is also a God who will punish, who has punished, and who will yet punish. Amen? Amen. What is grace? Well, simple. God's grace is God's unmerited favor. When God looks down upon our sinners, we don't deserve to live, but God's grace 
is undeserved. He pardons us. He gives us favor. <coughs> he sent Christ to die on Calvary's cross. That's God's grace. We don't earn it. We don't, we don't earn salvation. Grace is not works. God's grace is unmerited favor upon sinful human beings. Amen. So whenever God gives us good things, that's God's grace. Anything good in your life, a blessing, that's God's grace. All the blessings of your life, that's God's grace. Do we understand? Yes. And by the way, God's grace works for the believers and sometimes it works yes. on the believers. Yes. Because God sends the rain and He sends the sun. Right. Mm -hmm. God causes the crops to grow, even among non-believers. That's God's grace. All right. So we understand, God's grace is unmerited favor. Un we are undeserving. The word mercy is somewhat similar, but there is a difference. God's mercy is about God's forbearance. I'll give you an example in the real world of, of children and parents. <coughs> a parent says to the child, I do not want you to open the stove and try to cook a meal, because if you do, you're going to burn the house down. Hmm. All right? And you warn the child, don't do that. And you leave for a few minutes, you come back in the kitchen, and what, what happens? While well, the stove is on, the child has lit a fire, and some things have caught fire. Now the child is your punishment for disobedience. But you can be merciful by not giving the child the full punishment that he deserves. That's mercy. So mercy means forbearance and forgiveness. So that the person who has done wrong does not receive the full measure of punishment. Are you with me? Yeah. Everybody understands this? Yeah. So, everybody knows the word grace and mercy. What about the word punish? Well, let me give you the Webster's Dictionary definition of punish, and you will see how much sense it makes. I took this straight from Webster. <laughs> punish, to subject to pain, loss, confinement, or death as a penalty for an offense, transgression, or fault. Oh, don't talk about that, punish. God will not do that. Yet, think about it. In the real world, is there punishment? Yes. All you parents, have you punished your children? Mm -hmm. Oh, but that's a strong word. It doesn't matter whether it's a strong word. You punish your children. If your children did something wrong and you stand them, you punish them. You call it discipline. It's still punishment. You, there was a transgression, there was an offense, and you gave the child five swats or seven or time out, whatever it was, there was a punishment, there was a loss, there was a confinement, there was a penalty paid because of the child's offense. Am I correct? Yes. Spouse to spouse, sometimes husbands and wives punish one another. Yes? I'm not, I don't mean physically, even though in some cultures physically do. Yeah. But in many ways, spouses punish their spouses. Think about it. Punishment exists. How about an employer to an employee? Mm -hmm. An employer can punish an employee because the employee failed to obey the order regarding that contract or the business operation. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the employee does not get the promotion or rather than gets a demotion. Mm -hmm. That's punishment. So what am I saying? In the real world, punishment exists. Am I correct? Yeah. Everybody gets it? Yes. So does God punish? Does a God of love punish people? Yes. Now, before I go any further, let me be clear. I'm not talking about suffering. I'm talking about God's direct punishment. I'm not talking about human suffering because you got up in the morning and instead of drinking a glass of juice or a cup of coffee, you decided to drink a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> and then you stepped out into the road and a car ran you over because you were not able to make out a car from a human being. You were drunk. God didn't punish you. You suffered the consequences of your own foolishness. Do we understand? Yes. So don't confuse this sermon. I'm speaking of punishment directly from God in contrast with our own suffering based on our own mistakes in life. Am I clear? Yes. You want to eat sugar every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then your body breaks down in health. God isn't punishing you. You're punishing yourself. Yeah. Am I clear? Yes. 
punishment, so does God punish? Yes. Well, we all want to hear about God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy, and that's great. Because without God's love, without God's grace, without God's mercy, I will not be here. Nor will you be here. Amen? Without God's grace, I will not be preaching the word of God. So, that's a given. It's obvious to the Christian. But let's not go to the extreme and say, because God is a God of love, and God is a God of grace, and God is a God of mercy, that cancels punishment. God's love does not cancel punishment. Are we understanding? Yes. So we have become too wishy-washy and too sissy-ish in this world today. We can't talk about we can't talk about punishment. We can't talk about being tough. We, no, 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 no. Never hurt the child for life. Never traumatize the child for life. Well, look, we have so many traumatized snowflakes right now because they were not punished. If they were punished properly, they wouldn't be messed up the way they are today. Amen. I'm sure your parents who are young, older will agree with me. Amen. Younger parents, listen well. Don't think you know everything. You don't know anything. Because your culture tells you, oh, oh, you know, that's, that's hard. The Bible says, don't spare the rod. Because if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. Amen. The Bible says, foolishness is bound up yeah. in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Amen. Well, I believe that, all right. I know. I know. I know. So, punishment. Okay. <coughs> Let me use the Bible. Of course. What do I always use to prove my point theologically? The Holy Bible. So, so don't get me wrong. Is God a God of love? Everybody, is God a God of love? Yes. yes. Is our God a God of grace? Yes. yes. Is our God a God of mercy? Yes. Does God's, or do, or do, yes. Do God's love, grace, and mercy cancel punishment? No. <coughs> if there is no punishment from God, then please tell me how we explain some scriptures in the Old Testament and in the New. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Watch. Genesis chapter 3. This is for those people who don't believe, oh, you know, it's okay, we can do anything. God just loves us. You know, He doesn't, He wants the best for us. And, you know, it makes me feel good emotionally, so I will do it. Yeah, yeah. The LGBT will have you believe that. The transgender group will have you believe that all of the people today who are totally messed up, if they were properly punished, they wouldn't be perhaps so messed up today. So let's go to verse 16. God had created man and woman, right? And God had given them a law, right? God said to Adam and Adam, of this tree, you shall not eat of it. When you eat of it, if you do, you shall surely die. That's a law. That's a command. What happened? Well, you know the rest of the story. They disobeyed, right? Yeah. So here, God, God comes down on the scene. After Adam and Eve had sinned, after they had eaten of the forbidden fruit, and God, the God of love, the God of grace, the God of mercy, right? Yeah. Here's what he does. Right. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow hmm. and your conception. In pain, <laughs> everybody say pain. pain. How many of you like pain? Raise your hand. Nobody likes pain? Of course not. As an adult or as a child, nobody likes pain. But yet God said to the woman, in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. So one of the consequences of sin was the punishment. Now, the word punishment makes more sense. Yeah. There was a penalty imposed upon the woman because of sin. Is God right to do that? Of yes. course he's right to do that. He's God. That wasn't God's hate. No. He wanted Eve to understand, and thereafter all human beings, that there is a consequence of sin. We live in a world in America and the rest of the world where people don't want to understand that sin is real and that there will be bad consequences of sin. There will be punishment. Why do you think millions and perhaps billions are going to hell? Because they don't believe in the concept of punishment. Mm -hmm. People think, well, we can do anything and get away with it. And then when they realize, oh, you mean uh, uh, I did something wrong? Uh, uh, I have to go to jail. Uh, uh, yes, you do. Well, uh, well, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Not sorry at all. 
What did God say to Adam? Verse 17. Here's what God said to Adam. Did God punish Adam? Yes. There's a punishment. You may not like the word punishment, but you know, choosing your word and trying to argue, like people want to argue about these things. Look, let's not waste our time arguing with God. This is what God did. What does this look like? Punishment or blessing? <laughs> Adam, Adam, he said, because, because you have heeded the voice of your wife. Now, he's not saying here, you should never listen to the wife's voice. In the context, Adam was wrong to have listened to the voice of Eve. Are we understanding? Yes. yes. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. So Adam, you ate of a tree, right? I gave you the authority to leave your wife. I told you you were the boss, right? You let her eat. You didn't stop her. And then, worse than that, she offered it to you. And instead of obeying me, you obeyed her. You pleased her and displeased me. Well, Adam, punishment is coming down. Here's the punishment. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Does that sound like a blessing? No. Punishment. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So, we look at how nature has been cursed. Nature has been cursed. Leave a field unattended for a year. When you come back, you don't find oranges and bananas and coconuts. You, know. you find thistles and, and, and briars and thorns. You find bush of no value. God punish the earth. God punish Eve and God punish Adam and God punish the earth. Are we on the same page so far? Yes. Do we see it in the Word of God? Yes. I'm simply teaching you the Word of God for your own benefit right now. You see, there is coming a greater day of punishment. Hmm. And you better listen to the Word of God because if you don't, your punishment will be a lot greater than what we see here. In fact, Let's go to one example of a man who complained and his punishment was greater than he could bear. Remember Cain? Yes. Oh, yes. Cain murdered his brother Abel. God had specific laws. Now, why would murder be wrong? Because God had already told them. God, don't, don't assume that God didn't tell them. They knew it was wrong. But Cain murdered his brother. So in Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, verse 10 to verse 14, here's what we read. <coughs> Genesis 10, oh, 4, chapter 4, sorry. What have you done? So God says to Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Cain, I'm hearing the voice of your brother's blood. Of course, God is speaking symbolically, figuratively, not literally. But the point is being made. Cain, you have done something wrong. You murdered your brother. Why? Because of your intense anger, your jealousy. So what happens now? Verse 11. So now, here, here we go. So now, if we get this on the board here. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Cain, okay, I'm going to punish you. You see this little, little, little stick here. It's not a right to punish. Uh, I use it as my pointer. I remember growing up, my father had a switch, a little rod. And whenever we saw that rod, we would run like crazy. Because the moment you raise that rod, you know what that meant? The punishment is coming. Um, I have five brothers, I'm the eldest of six sons, and none of my brothers are emotionally traumatized at all. They all got the rod, some more than others. I learned very quickly after one spanking, there was never another spanking. I said, boy, I don't like spanking. <laughs> I used to be a school teacher. Yes, back in my days, in my country where I was born, where teachers had the authority to spank children. Can you believe that? Yes. When I was a teacher in the school I went to and I taught, I had the legal authority to spank children. Yes. And I did. I did. And when they meet me, they thank me for it. <laughs> Today, they call the police for you. Yeah. I wonder if America is so messed up. Yeah. This is a good thing. A right of correction, I like it. 
If only we get back to it, if we got back to using this, we would have a lot less problems in the world today, don't you know that? Yes. Yeah, I'm a strong believer in punishment. I am a strong believer in punishment. Crying must be punished. I say again, crying must be punished. Yes. With mercy, but crying must be punished. <coughs> so, God says to uh, Cain, verse 12, when you till the ground, when you till the ground, so remember he already had placed the punishment on, on, on Adam, on the ground. So now to Cain he says, when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength for you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Wow. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Does that sound like a blessing or punishment? Oh, don't tell that to people today. Our new generations don't like the word punishment. Just love on me, just love. Love on you for what? So you can go and commit more crimes? No. I'd rather you stay behind the bars for as long as it takes mm -hmm. until you get your head straightened out. God is a God of love. He's also a God of punishment. Verse 13, Cain said to the Lord. So Cain now, when he realizes verbally, when he understood the full impact of what God had just said, what does he do? Instead of repenting, verse 13, Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Maybe, Cain, you should have thought about that when you were murdering your brother, Abel. What a sick world we live in today. Sick world. Sick, sick world. I do not feel sorry for murderers who are executed. If you committed a murder in cold blood, I am not talking about self-defense. If you committed a murder in cold blood and the executioner has to chop off your head, you deserve it. Simple. Simple as simple can be. Why don't we get that? What mercy? There is no mercy. Give you mercy so you can go back and commit some more crimes and more rapes and more murders? No. That's it. You have made a choice. God was very clear about these things, people. Very clear. Our society has come along and watered everything down to the point where parents can no longer punish their children in America. Did you know that? Yeah. What a crazy culture this is that parents can no longer punish their children. And that's why children grow up to be the savage beasts that they are. No respect for authority, no respect for law, no respect for God. But you know, those of us who grew up with punishment, we learn to respect authority very quickly. Mm -hmm. Do I have amen from anybody here? Amen. Oh, yes, you learned. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Verse 14. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. <laughs> okay, so all of a sudden you're concerned about somebody killing you. Were you thinking about Abel's death when you, because of your greed and envy, when you took that big piece of wood and slugged him over the head? Were you thinking about his death? Were you thinking, Cain? No. Now you want me to what? Forego the punishment? No, Cain. I have spoken. You will be a fugitive. And the Bible. Anybody understanding the message today? Yes. yes. My God is the God of love. Amen. Amen. My God is a God of grace. Amen. My God is a God of mercy. Amen. My God is also a God of punishment. And for that I thank you. Amen. Amen. For that I thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. My God is not the Supreme Court of America. My God is the Supreme Court of the universe. Hallelujah. And he may get away with the Supreme Court of America, but you can't get away with the Supreme Court of God's heaven. Hallelujah. 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 He will judge you. Yes. And the final day. We're going to get there in a short while. And you will see how serious this judgment really is. You know, we need some more fire and brimstone sermons. We have so watered down the word of God, and everybody wants to have a sermon of, make me feel good, Pastor. Just bless me. Oh, just bless me. Uh, you know. Well, let me tell you what the word of God says. Do what God says. Amen. The reason we have so much emotional, psychological disorders and messed up people is because we have refused to honor the word of God. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. 
Be a local a psychiatrist and psychologist and therapist, and all of them are talking plain nonsense. Yes. Foolishness. Yes. God's word is authority. God's word will change your life. Amen. Believe it and do it. Amen. Yes. Cain, okay, you messed up. You will pay the price. Amen. Wow. I still raise the mercy. We'll get to the mercy in a short while. Let's establish first he's a God of punishment. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, how about Noah's time? Remember Noah's time? So, it was a few years afterwards. The earth was populated. And everybody was having a great time committing sin. The earth was full of violence. Yes. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis 6, verse 5. I will not spend too much time there. The God of love, the God of grace, and the God of mercy. He said, look here it is. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Was what great in the earth? And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God saw that. God saw the population, the people who lived during the time of Noah, they were only thinking evil. Violence, violence, violence. In America, we have lawyers and liberals who want to defend MS-13. Are you kidding me? Defend MS-13? Absolutely never. God made a decision. No, I can't believe that man has become so evil. I have made the decision. I will destroy all flesh. God punishes. Do I amen? Amen. The Lord was sorry, verse 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. He was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, every creeping thing, and birds of the air. Well, I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Noah, God gave grace to Noah. God gave grace to know so the human race could continue. Mm. Otherwise, at that point, church, all humanity would have been wiped out. One man and his family. God says, Noah, I'll give you grace. I look at your heart. I'll give you. Noah wasn't perfect righteously, but he was, he was a man of God. He obeyed God. He found grace. So even here, God's grace was operated. Amen? How about Sodom and Gomorrah? One last New Test Old Testament example. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. Oh, Sodom and Gomorrah, that reminds me of America today. New York City, mm. San Francisco, Las Vegas. Reminds me of the Democratic Party. Mm. I don't care what you say. I don't really care what you think. Folks, let me be clear. When it comes to the Bible, your political opinion and your cultural opinion are of no consequence. Yeah. Do I hear amen? amen? Your racial opinion, no consequence. Your philosophy, no relevance. God's word. God is looking for men and women who will stand on the absolute authority of God's word. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We have enough cultural nonsense. We must believe the word of God and proclaim it boldly. That's foolishness we have today. I cannot tolerate it any longer. I am tired. I'm exhausted listening to liberal nonsense. Mm -hmm. God has spoken. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah have become two cities of sin. Sexual sin. Homosexuality. LGBT, PQR. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> men were having sex with men. <laughs> that was the preferred mode. Yeah. Homosexual marriages or well, homosexuality isn't just today. It's not a modern phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It has been around a long time. Yeah. And God said, you know, Abraham, oh, uh, Abraham, I've got to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, chapter uh, 19, sorry, chapter 19. Punishment is about to, to flow here. Chapter 19 of Genesis, we know there was a conversation that God had with 
Abraham, and then God made the decision, it was time to destroy them. Verse 23, here we go. Verse 23. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. So God said to Lot, if you want to escape the destruction I'm sending on Sodom and Gomorrah, you must take your wife and your children and get out. Take your wife and your children and get out. Don't hold on to your belongings, your material possessions in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Get out. Because Lot, I will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. And that's what he did. Here we go. The Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. From the Lord out of the heavens. This was People can say whatever they want. It was a volcanic eruption. Whatever you want to call it. God Almighty. At that precise moment. He caused the volcano to erupt. Amen. It was a divine act of God. It wasn't some scientific phenomenon. That suddenly happened. It was God's divine punishment. Sin carries a very heavy price. And the world no longer talks about sin. Pastors no longer speak against sin because they want to build their kingdom of prosperity. Mm -hmm. I don't have a kingdom of prosperity. My kingdom is yet to come. Hallelujah. Like Jesus said, when Pilate said to him, are you a king then? He said, Pilate, so you know I'm a king, but my kingdom is not this one. It's yet to come. People are fighting for a kingdom today in this world, mm -hmm. in this sin stinking, evil, mm -hmm. sinful world. You want a kingdom? <coughs> so does God punish? Yes. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He punished. Yes. Oh, but that's a mean God. Listen, my friends, you can sit back there and describe God as mean, bad, ugly, wicked, whatever. And the fact remains that one day you will stand before him to be judged. You are not the judge. You think you're so moral? You think you're so holy? You think you're so wise? You think you're so intelligent? You have a PhD in psychology. You have a PhD in psychology and worth nothing. Sorry for the bad English. Worth nothing. Your PhD in psychology is just PhD in rubbish. Amen. Okay. I have college degrees too. Man's knowledge is useless. Foolishness. foolishness unto God. The wisdom of man is foolishness with God. Hallelujah. 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 You don't stand before God and say, well, you know, according to my research, hey, little worm, your research is irrelevant. I am the judge. I am the creator. I am the living God. Hallelujah. We humans have to wake up and humble ourselves before a living God. Yes. The God of love, the God of grace, and the God of mercy. Don't expect you can just do whatever you want. And you can, you know, you liberals out there, you liberals out there, who believe you can tell Christians all the nonsense you tell us, and you can condemn us all the way you want. My God is bigger than your liberal nonsense. Amen. You will pay the price for that. Yes. You will be punished yes. unless you repent. Amen. Because the same God who will punish you is the same God who will give you grace if you will Amen. repent. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So God is to our Sermon Gomorrah. Now let's fast forward. Okay. You may say to me, but Pastor, that's Old Testament. Uh -huh. You're very right. That's right. 2,000 years ago, guess what? Jesus came. Yes. Very good. Very good logic so far. Let's take your logic a step further. And Christ came to die on Calvary's cross. Right. That's brilliant. Beautiful. What amazing love. Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua came to pay the price for our sinners. To reconcile us to God. So that we don't have to die. So that we don't have to face eternal punishment. Yep. Are you with me so far? Yes. That's God's grace. Nothing I did. No, it's what God did. God's grace was manifested on Calvary's cross. So when I accept the cross... I accept the full, whatever flows from that, right? Meaning my forgiveness and my reconciliation and my name being written in the book of life. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, but you see, my friend, you don't fully understand what I just said to you. That 
Grace only applies when you're willing to receive it. Amen. If you say to God, I don't want Jesus, I want to live my own life, sorry, then you shall be punished. So what I'm saying to you, I'm going to show you from New Testament, even though God gave grace, has given grace, and is still giving grace, and we live in what's called the age of grace. Today we live in the age of grace. This is the dispensation of grace. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. So God is reaching out to all the nations of the world via whatever methods he's using to bring people into salvation. That's God's grace. Amen. The worst sinner, the worst criminal, the worst murderer, the worst rapist, the worst fiend. Mm -hmm. God will bring you through his grace Thank you, Lord. and save you. Amen. 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 That's grace. But the same God who's giving grace warns you. If you fail to receive it, there is coming a judgment. Mm -hmm. Beloved, there is coming a judgment. Yeah. Believe it or not, everybody will be judged. And in that judgment, believe it or not, some will enter the kingdom of God and some will be sent to a place called the lake of fire. Did you know that? Yes. Oh, but so Christ didn't cover for that? <laughs> he only covered for those who receive it. Amen. If you don't have his blood stamped on your heart as we explained last month during Passover month. Mm -hmm. If you're not covered by the blood, then you're not protected by the blood. Mm -hmm. The only protection against punishment is the blood of Christ covering your heart. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. What amazing love. We sing amazing grace. Amazing love. Oh yes, the blood of Christ. But now, watch this. The same Jesus, the same Yeshua, who came to the earth 2,000 years ago, has some words for, for those who refuse to listen. Matthew chapter 13. Moving from the Old Testament now to the New. So for those who know the Bible, <laughs> for those who want to know the Bible, here is what Jesus says. Yeshua says it in Matthew chapter 13. I wish to begin the verse 24. Jesus gives a parable. Now parables, again, like, time is against me here, but I'm going to do the best to explain this to you. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, which is like the kingdom of God, is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. So Christ is explaining what the kingdom of God is like unto. It's a parable. It's not literal. It's a parable to explain it, spiritual reality. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. Verse 25, And while man slept, I'm going to read from the Bible here, and you can follow along there. While man slept, his enemy came along and sowed tears, T-A-R-E-S, among the wheat and went his way. When the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant says to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, 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 no. Lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the weak with them. Mm -hmm. I'll explain in a few minutes. Let both grow together. Watch now. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, gather the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Wheat and tears. So, in the field of agriculture, I'm no, I'm no um, agricultural expert, but wheat and tears look very similar externally. So it's very difficult sometimes to know the false from the, the counterfeit from the genuine. So the Lord of the harvest says, no, don't approve anything. We don't want you to cause a problem right now. At harvest time, we will make the distinction. What does this mean? The disciples were wondering, well, what does this mean? What does this have to do with the kingdom of God? Well, here's the answer. You know what I like about these parables? In most cases, if at all, I don't have to guess the explanation Christ gives it. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I don't have to create something and create my own. Well, I believe God said this. No, here's, here is exactly what it means. So now we drop on down to verse 36. Verse 36. Wow. Here we go. Verse 36. Jesus sent the multitude away. So now the, the, the big crowd is gone. Now he's speaking to whom? His disciples, right? Mm -hmm. He sent them away and went in the house and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tears of the field. 
the, the, the disciples didn't get it. So what do you mean? Enlighten us. And Christ said, okay, here it comes. He answered and said to them, he who sowed the good seed is the son of man. Who is the son of man? Yeshua, right? Yeah. He who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the whole world. The good seeds are the seed sons of the kingdom. Who are the sons of the kingdom? Those who receive God's grace. Yeah. Those who receive the sacrifice of Christ. But the tears are the sons of the wicked one. Oh, you mean there are some sons of wicked one? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The wicked one is Satan. Mm -hmm. The wicked one is the devil. Mm -hmm. I have a word for you from the Lord. In this world today, as it was then 2,000 years ago, there are people who serve the true God, and there are people who don't serve the true God, which means that they serve the devil, whether or not they recognize it. Yes. So therefore, those are sons of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Everybody has this feeling. You know what's funny about people? There are people who don't believe that God exists. I find this amusing, somewhat irritating also. There are people who are atheists, they don't believe in God, yet they will argue, and talk about God. Why are you arguing about God and talking about God when you don't even believe in God? You must believe in God, right? That's why he's always, you're always talking about it. Why are you atheists angry at God when you don't believe he exists? Your anger has no sense. You are angry at a non-existent thing. Are you getting it? Okay. You're a son of Satan. Atheists, I say to you on the authority of the Bible, you're a son of the devil. All you people out there who are practicing immorality without any sense of conscience or need for repentance, you are sons of Satan. Right. You are sons of the wicked one. And if you don't repent and receive God's grace and God's mercy, you will be punished. How do I know? Well, here it comes. Here it comes. The enemy who sowed the tears is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Are we getting closer? Yes. Now watch, next verse. <coughs> wow. Verse 40. Verse 40. Therefore, as the tears are gathered and burned in a fire, so it will be at the end of the age. 2,000 years ago, Christ had come to pay the price, right? Yes. yes. Now Christ is projecting 2,000 years after, at the end of the age, which we have come to believe right now. So Christ is saying to the disciples who did not understand the parable of the wheat and the tears, it will be at the end of the age. Something is going to happen. What will happen? Well, let's go further. Let's watch. Verse 41. The Son of Man will send out His angels. Verse 41. Everybody who is the Son of Man, that's a reference to who? Messiah Yeshua, right? Yeah. The Son of Man will, future, hence, not yet, he was speaking to his disciples. He had not yet died on the cross. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they, the angels, will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Mm. Oh, yes. really? I thought God loves everybody. Well, you miss, you miss the point of God's love. That's what it is. And those who practice lawlessness. Oh, lawlessness? What's lawlessness? <laughs> I thought everything was okay. Lawlessness, let me see if I can help you. <laughs> Snowflakes. You practice lesbianism, that's lawlessness. Yeah. You're practicing homosexuality, that's lawlessness. Yeah. You're practicing transgenderism, that's lawlessness. Yeah. You're practicing abortion, that's lawlessness. Yeah. You're practicing adultery, that's lawlessness. Yeah. You are practicing extortion and exploitation, that's lawlessness. Yeah. Are we getting it? Yes. Yeah. You're practicing lying as a politician, that's lawlessness. Yes. <laughs> You're practicing greed as a, as a pastor, that's lawlessness. Amen. Oh, well, we're getting kinda hot here. Yeah. At this point, nobody likes me. <laughs> so okay. what's new? <laughs> These are the words of Christ. Yeah. At the end of the age, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Mm -hmm. All. And then what? And those who practice the lawlessness, next verse, and those who practice the lawlessness, verse 42, here's the exciting part of this verse, next verse, and those who practice the lawlessness, so we're missing something, 
and cast them into heaven. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me read that again. Sorry. <laughs> those who practice lawlessness, those who refuse Jesus as God's gift of grace, those who refuse Christ as Messiah, those who hated Christ, those who persecuted Christians, those who condemned Christians and killed them day after day, night after night, Christ will cast them into the furnace of fire. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Let me tell you something, church members. Let me tell you something, Christians. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The, the righteous will eventually flourish. Amen. The righteous will reign. And the wicked shall be no more. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't wait for that day when the wicked shall be stubborn under the feet yes. of the righteous. Yes. When the wicked shall be nothing, they shall be like dust. Yes. They will yes. cast them into the furnace of fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So all you people out there, you liberals, and you atheists, and you people who mock us, and you hate us, and you say what a bunch of whatever you say that we are. Let me tell you something. We are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are standing on solid ground. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Amen. the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. And Amen. cast them into the first heart. Yes. Pastor, that's me. Amen. I didn't say that. Word of the Lord. I didn't make that up. It's in the Word of God. Now, the purpose of my sermon is to help you avoid the lake of fire. If you are down that path, that broad path, that will take you into the furnace of fire, the purpose of this message is to say, hey, stop. Yeah. Turn around. Yeah. Hmm. Accept God's ways. Yeah. Accept God's yeah. love. Now watch this. Next part of the verse. Uh, is this exciting or what? Yes, sir. Oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Cast them into the lake of fire. The next part of the verse. There will be wailing. <laughs> there will be... Go, go back. There will be... Oh, yes. Furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> That's an expression that simply means you people out there who don't believe the word of God, on judgment day, when Christ sends you into hell, you will be screaming. Mm -hmm. You will be in torment. Mm -hmm. And you'll be gnashing your teeth if you have teeth left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure in hell they will have dentists. Oh. Who will provide dental plates for you at a maximum cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm kidding. Look, people, I have no time for foolishness. The time has come when men of God, men and women of God, must stand up and declare the word of God with boldness and authority. Amen. 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 No more foolishness. Yes. No more time for political squabbles and nonsense. Stop the racism. Stop the political garbage. Yes. Believe in Jesus. Amen. Believe in Jesus. Yes. Believe in Jesus. Yes. Facebook, be warned. Yes, Mr. Facebook, be warned. You are stifling conservatives. You are stifling Christians. You will end up in the lake of fire. Oh, that's hate speech. That's love speech. The Bible is the only authority. Somebody say amen. Amen. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I don't wish that for you. I wish you would heed the message and repent. Receive God's grace and be saved. Do I amen? Amen. You still don't think that's enough evidence to prove that God does punish? Oh, I know what you're saying, what you're thinking, but, but why would God do that? Well, why? Well, think of it. God has a law, right? Yeah. God has made provision for you to enter his kingdom. So you decide, oh, I, I, I don't want to make time for God. I just want to live my life have sex every day with every woman or man that comes around. I just want to have a good time, get drunk, and if I feel to do it to an animal tomorrow, I can do it to an animal. You know, I, I just want to be happy. Happy? By whose standard? By whose law? God will not want any practicing sinner in His kingdom. And why should He? His kingdom is a kingdom of holiness and purity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Only those who are undefiled can enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Praise yeah. the name. Yeah. We don't want any murderers and homongers and adulterers and LGBTQ people in the kingdom of God. No, no, no. Okay. 
No Democrats and no, and no, no, no Republicans either. Only servants of God. Amen. Only servants of God. Amen. Only servants of God. Amen. In the kingdom of God, let me be very clear to you, we're not going to have the Catholic section and the Anglican section and the Moravian section and the Methodist section and the Episcopalian section and the Born Again section and the Charismatic section and the Pentecostal section. And... No. Only one section. Hallelujah. The servants of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Yes. For you people who are racist, there will not be the black. Here is the black people who made it, and the white people who made it, and the Chinese who made it, and the Russians who made it. No. We are one family in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What can be gathered into our heads? Punishment is coming. Behold, I say to you, on the authority of the Bible, punishment is coming. Yes. My time is going. Now that's my punishment, my time is going to be <laughs> Matthew 25. Jesus speaks again. And the Son of Man comes to judge the nations. Now I don't have time to go to all of Matthew 25. That's an entire sermon there. So I am not going to spend all my time on that. I just want to go to verse 41 and on to verse 46. But the context is when Christ returns, there will be a judgment of the nations. Some believe that judgment of the nations is not a reference to the final judgment, but rather, before he establishes the millennial kingdom, all nations will be judged on the basis of how they treated Israel and the Christians. Whatever it is, the point I'm going to make is the point that needs to be made. Punishment. Verse 41. Then he, Christ, will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, Prepared for the devil and his angels. Hold up. Is that punishment or blessing? Punishment. And he will tell them why. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. He begins now to identify specifically what they failed to do to God's chosen nation, Israel, and God's chosen people, the church. Are you with me? You know all those Muslims who are murdering Christians every single day? In the name of your Allah, he will burn in hell. Right. Hate speech, I'm telling you what the Bible says. Right. Unless you repent, Amen. you will go to hell. Amen. 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 I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Now, the world laughs at Jews. The world laughs at Christians. <laughs> The two groups of this world that suffer the most persecution today by the UN and by every nation on this earth are Jews and Christians. Today in America, it is safer to be a Muslim than a Christian. The whole world hates Christians. The whole world, Jesus said to his disciples, you shall be hated by all nations for my name say. Does it break your heart? No, we are in the minority now, and it will get worse. Don't believe the false pastors. The false pastors are bound far more than the true servants of God. Uh, verse 46, verse 46, oh, just one verse to get the point. And these will go away, those whom God rejects. They will go away into everlasting punishment. Everybody say punishment. Punishment. Everlasting what? Punishment. Everlasting what? Punishment. And how long will the punishment be? Forever. How long will the punishment be? Everlasting. How long is everlasting? Everlasting. Lasting forever? Yes. Everlasting. It's not Pastor Jay's message. It's Christ. These will go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous, where will the righteous go? Into life. life. Ah, thank you, Lord, for grace. I'm righteous not because I'm righteous. I'm righteous because I accepted the righteousness of Christ in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah, I suffer too. Oh, yeah, I go through pains every single day of my life. Physical pain, sometimes emotional pain, sometimes who knows what other pain. But you know what? In all that pain, there is gain. Amen. Because my name is in the book of life. Hallelujah. Amen. And when I enter into eternal life, there will be no more pain. Thank you, Lord. No more pain. No more shame. 
No more persecution. No more fears. No more need for politicians. Good for nothing politicians. Scheming demons. No more need for them. No more race baiters and race haters. Thank God. No more need for them. Are we listening, everybody? Yes. Lord, that day is coming. I want to close the sermon, folks, because my time is up by going to Revelation 21. Our God is the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of love. Nothing changes that. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21, verse 6 and verse 7 and verse 8, and I'm done. Mm. Revelation 21. He said to me, it is done. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Mm. Wow. Free as God's grace. Yeah. As God's grace. I didn't work for it. You didn't work for it. And you can't work for it. God's salvation is a gift. Freely given, freely received. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, verse 7. Bad news for the sinners. Bad news. But he who overcomes... Sorry, but verse 8. Oh, let's read verse 7 first. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. Now the bad news. Next verse. Verse 8. But the cowardly, <coughs> unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, and that covers a lot of territory. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to identify all of them. Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Does that sound like punishment or blessing? Punishment. That is the second death. Beloved, Jehovah, God, is the God of grace. He is the God of love. He is the God of mercy. He is the God of forbearance. And the God of every good thing. But this same God is the God of justice. The God of judgment and the God of punishment. Amen. Are we understanding? Yes. yes. Yahweh is absolutely and beyond compare the God of love. Yes, he proved his love already by sending his only begotten son, Yeshua. And whoever should believe in him will not die, but have life eternal. Yes, yes God gives to you and to me his grace freely every single day. Yes, God gives us mercy to His children every single day. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, He will punish all evildoers. From the politician who sits in the highest land to the prisoner who sits in the lowest dungeon. From the man who is the multi-billionaire and can own half of the earth to the penniless pauper who owns nothing, not even the clothes on his back. God is the God who will bless those who honor him and punish those who dishonor him. The message is clear. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, whatever your religion is, Christ didn't come to start a new one. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, I urge you today to save yourself. Not that you can save yourself, but to receive salvation from someone who has the power to save you. Receive Jesus as your personal Savior and your Lord and your King. And your name will be written in the book of life. And you will never have to go to the lake of fire. May God give you the grace and the mercy and the faith and the courage to make the right choice right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.